All right, I gotta figure out where I want to go this turn. Um, I've got uh, one of the markers up here, so I could uh, charge up here, maybe even fight the ghoul, and uh, hope to encounter another one of the followers. Or I could run over to Uptown. There are a lot of clues, but at the moment, they're not telling me I need clues. So unless I want to go to Hangman's Hill and get rid of some of that doom, which I could do, or you old magic chef, I can get a spell. Uh, what do I have up here? So I have the graveyard and the general store. Don't really need items from the general store, except maybe that uh, that bulletproof vest, but I don't have enough money for that. And the graveyard are not my strongest skills. So, I mean, if I just ran up to him, I'd probably just waste my encounter. So actually, something interesting. If I move one, two, three, four, and go to Hangman's Hill, um, and then I ward away the Doom, then the guy will actually go up to the police station, because that'll be the new uh, space with the most Doom. But again, Hangman's Hill is not the best things, and I don't really need a common item. I think I'm just going to go fight the, the ghoul. That seems like the, uh, the best plan. So we'll have to go one, two, three. So that's one dollar. So I got one dollar left. But clearly I won't be able to buy very much of the general store. And uh, now I'm going to fight him for my second action. Remember he's a bit of a pushover. He's got two life, minus one dice. So with my shotgun I'll be rolling six dice. And uh, I only need to get one hit because Lita's going to take care of the other one. Well, I didn't even need Lita's help. I did three damage all by myself. So that gets me another remnant. Uh, to go with my other three. <laughs> I wish I did have another spell so I could actually use some of these remnants for something else. Okay, so since there are no monsters left alive, I'm going to resolve an encounter at Rivertown. And it is not the uh, one that'll spawn the cultist, so let's see what the general store says. Schaffner's general is busy today. You may buy any number of common items from the display. As you're, leaving, as you're leaving, Nathan is loading up the truck to make a few deliveries. You may help him. If you do, he offers to give you a ride. You may move up to three spaces. So the only thing I can afford at the general store is this liquid courage. That does nothing except give me two more uh, sanity. But between having two allies with a bunch of sanity and me still having a decent amount, that doesn't really seem worth it. So the question becomes, do I want to let him move me three spaces? Now, I don't think I want to move out of this neighborhood because uh, since I got rid of one card, I am closer to definitely finding the card for the next cultist. But I will let him move me to the Black Cave. The Black Cave uh, uses lore or willpower, both of which I'm very good at, and gets you either spells or curio uh, unique items. So uh, both of those things I would like, especially the spells. So I'd rather be there and not have to use an action moving there next turn. I might be able to focus and get some more money, for example, instead. Okay, let's see this round's Mythos tokens. Oh, I get another monster. Flesh Eater. Lovely. He's also spawning at the Unstable Space, so that'll be the general store. He actually hunts me actively, ah, which means I might not stay at the Black Cave. Now I kind of wish I'd been to the general store. So I got two life and no minus. There's a wet, crunching sound on the thing's shoulder quivers as it tears flesh from bone. Delicious. I might just be moving right back and fighting with the general store, which is a little bit of a bummer. Or, I, you know, I guess I could let him come to me and just take one of each damage, but then I wouldn't get an encounter anyway, so that's not really going to be worth it. Okay, my second token is the other headline. Let's see what card I get. Occult Activity Threatened City. Old house demolished after purchase by Silver Twilight Lodge. Workmen found sinister altar shrine. Looks satanic, says one. Okay, choose one. Either place one's doom in your space, or spawn one monster in your space. <laughs> well, that's easy. Uh, there's no doom in my space right now, so one is not going to hurt anybody much. So I wanted to, like, focus and get money and stay here, maybe get a spell, but this uh, silly little flesh eater kind of ruined all those plans, so I'm just going to move back and attack him. Uh, he's got no minus. I need to do two damage, so I get to roll seven dice and only need to get one hit with Lita's power. Uh, should be, hopefully, pretty easy. Yep. Well, I did only get one, but with Lita, that's enough. He does. She does the other one, so he is defeated. I get a <laughs> fifth remnant. Good lord. You notice the rifle that usually hangs on the wall has gone missing. I've got it loaded behind the counter, says Davy. We've been getting a lot of dangerous oddballs coming around, but don't worry, we plan on staying open. You may buy any number of common items from the display. Well, pretty basic result there. It does not help me, as I don't want anything in the display and still don't have much money. Uh, and let's go right to the tokens. So, oh, the good thing, though, is uh, that means that the next card has to spawn the, uh, the next character. Okay, we got a new Doom in East Town at Hibbs Roadhouse which uh, now has two doom on it. Our second token is a blank. 
I was wondering where those were. Okay, I've kind of got two choices. I kind of just stay around here and definitely get to see a new cultist next turn, or I can run over to where all the doom is. But yeah, I'm gonna... I want to get that cultist. So I'm gonna use one action to move to the Black Cave, where I can have probably a better encounter. And for my second action, I can get some money, but what I think I'm gonna do is focus my willpower, because there have been a lot of uh, willpower things, and then also, you see the Black Cave often tests willpower. So that means now I've got both my observation and my willpower, at plus one. I'm at my focus limit, so if I focus again, I'd have to trade out one of those for a different skill. All right, let's see which uh, friendly cultist is coming to attack me. Uh, secrets are written on the wall in blood. Test my lore. Okay, and I've got four lore um, with a reroll still. Uh, if you pass, you decipher them. Passages from Cult de Ghoul. You gain one spell. Nice. Whether you pass or not, you find the discarded Gravedigger's Shovel. Spawn the set-aside Herman Collins monster at the graveyard. Okay, so we'll go see what he looks like in a second, but first let's see if I uh, gain this spell. Okay, so I'm rolling for lore. Nice, I got it. So now let's see if I finally get a spell that'll let me use all these remnants I've been saving up. Okay, I get Shriveling. Uh, action, test lore minus one. One monster in your space or an adjacent space suffers damage equal to your test result. You can perform this action while engaged with a monster. Well, that's interesting. So, instead of fighting, I can just straight up damage them. Which seems like it's not that useful, but I guess uh, if I didn't already have the power I had to let me fight with Laura would be really cool. And also, it doesn't uh, isn't affected by their my negative modifier if they had a really bad one. But yeah, unfortunately, that's pretty much a waste. Uh, I think my shotgun's better in almost every way. All right, let's check out our friend, the Grave Digger, Herman Collins. Okay, so every turn he makes this discard a focus. Doesn't seem as bad as Alma Hills. He's got three life, minus one. After you perform a focus action while engaged with Herman, you may spend two focus to defeat him. Well, that's kind of cool. So I could, like, convince him to stop being a cultist, I guess. Uh, clearly it's going to be much easier for me to just blast him with a shotgun, but it's nice that I have options. Let's see our two tokens. Another Doom. Uh, this time it's in Rivertown, right where I am on the graveyard and the general store. So that puts two on the general store and only one on the graveyard. So, you know, it's not ideal, but it's not terrible. And our second one is a blank. So, let's go take care of Herman. So if I can defeat Herman, this will be our third cultist, and uh, we'll only need two more to theoretically, we'll do whatever happens next. That's enough. It's exactly enough. Uh, so I do two damage, plus one from Lita. She has been a godsend. Uh, that takes care of good old Herman. So I defeat him, and I get another marker on the scenario sheet, which puts me up to three total. One from the Hunter, one from Herman, one from Alma. Hairs on your neck stand on end. If you pass a willpower check, you communicate with a lonely ghost who directs you to tarnish silver coins and urges you to spend them well. You gain three dollars. If you fail, the icy feeling of being watched follows you no matter how fast you flee. You suffer too horror. So I did boost my willpower, so I've got four dice, and I'd love to have that three dollars. Let's see if I can get it. Okay, sell my rabbit's foot if I need it. But I do not. My beautiful lucky streak continues. So I get uh, three more dollars. That gives me four total. Definitely nice to have that for movement and other uses. Okay, we got our last two tokens in the bag before we redraw. Got a new clue. That's going in... Uptown, which uh, actually puts, geez, three clues in Uptown. I'm glad I'm not going down there to try to find the cultist because I could, he could be down like five uh, cards or whatever, so not too big of a deal with that. And our other one is our last blank. So that was a nice little way to end the turn before I reshuffle them back in. Okay, I've got two main ways I can go. Um, here, here, because again, Uptown is full of clues and I don't think I'll get to people very quickly. Seems like the obvious choice is up here in uh, East Town, because I can get rid of the Doom on the police station or Hibbs Roadhouse and make sure they're safe. Uh, so Hibbs Roadhouse lets me spend money to heal sanity, and I, I do have three horror on me, so that seems like probably a good option. Police station would give me a chance to get a common item, but I don't know if I need any of them with my allies. See, so yeah, I'm going to uh, go... One, two, three. That does cost one of my four dollars. Thank you, Ghost, for leading me to your coins. And then I'm going to try to ward uh, those two Doom away. So I usually roll my lore of four, but thanks to my friendly ally, Grace, I get plus two, so I'm rolling six. 
<laughs> Four successes. Uh, that gets rid of both Doom at Hibbs Roadhouse. And uh, since I got rid of two or more at once, I get another Remnant, which, oh my gosh, I have six of those right now. Give me a break. The singer's tune comforts your troubled mind. You or an ally recovers two sanity. Well, that's lovely. My little uh, two sanity is going to become just... Or my three is going to become just one. Her voice uh, seems somehow hypnotic. You may spend one dollar to stay a while longer. If you do, the melody fixes itself in your memory, bringing your good luck when you whistle the tune. You become blessed! Oh my gosh, I'm definitely spending one dollar. Thank you, music lady. So the blessed condition is similar to how it's been in Arkham and Eldritch, in that now I succeed on four fives and sixes instead of just fives and sixes. But instead of having a chance to lose it every turn like in those other games, instead I lose it if I ever fail a test. But man, I mean, I've already been blessed. The fact that I'm now sort of officially blessed should uh, last me for a while, I think. Okay, I've reshuffled the token bag. Let's see what we get. Another Doom. And it's going on Rivertown in the General Store. Oh, that's not great. The General Store now has three Doom on it, which means one more and it will explode and add uh, Doom to the graveyard in the Black Cave. Second one is a blank. Nice little turn there. Let's keep it going. Okay, seems to make the most sense for me to move to the police station and uh, we'll go ahead and ward away those two Doom as well while I wait to meet another cultist. So I'm going to do my six ward. Gosh. Oh, that's right, with blessing, even at four count. So I get both of those. I get a remnant. I'm like basically just covered in monster guts at this point, just carrying around like all their pieces, like a little like bone necklace or something. Uh, yeah, there's no monsters. Let's see what my encounter is. Let's find a cultist. Once again, it's not the special card, which does mean that I should uh, definitely get it next time. Deputy Dingby says you forgot something last time you were here, but you don't recall doing so. I mean, last time I was here, I got a shotgun, so do I get another shotgun? Still, the deputy insists, so you pick through the lost and found anyway. You gain one common item with value three or less. Hey, that's great. Remember, when it's gain and not purchase, I can actually choose to uh, draw from the deck. Because right now my only two common uh, options are a bonus to evasion, leather coat, not really feeling that, or liquid courage for some extra sanity. So both of those give me extra health, but I want to do stuff better. Neither of them help me do things I actually want to do. So I'm going to draw from the deck until I get a common item with cost three or less. Okay, and eventually I come upon the magnifying glass, plus one to research actions. Uh, so, you know, not great. I don't even know if I'm going to be researching anymore, but I'll take it. Two mythos tokens. New monster. Who is our friend this time? nightmarish fiend spawn at the street nearest to prey oh man so he's right next to me what does he do whoa four life minus one feed after this monster deals damage to an investigator ally it recovers that much health Oof. i guess we have to go hunt this guy down which it's a bit of a bummer well let's see what we can do all right but either way he's going to spawn uh, over in a second and our second token is a blank. So I'd really like to stay where I am to have an encounter and uh, hopefully get the next cultist. But if I do, the Nightmarish Fiend will attack me and I won't actually have an encounter. If I go to fight him, I'll be in a street and I also won't get any closer to winning. So what I think I might do is go over to uh, downtown and then try to get him to go kind of out of position and then I can come back over here. So where do I want to be in downtown? La Bella Luna... Uh, influence or observation. I'm not great with either of those. Can get me money. I already have money. Independent Square. I can get a curio or common item. Arkham Asylum. I can heal sanity. None of those seems too exciting. Um, let's see. And he moves two. So if I'm in La Bella Luna, he'll go one, two, or one, two, my choice. If I'm in an Independent Square, he'll automatically go here, which means he'll block me if I try to move back through there. So sure, I'll go to La Bella Luna, and I will uh, go ahead and roll six dice to try to get rid of that little doom token there, the only one in the uh, neighborhood. You got it. Nice and easy, that. Okay, and this guy's going to chase me to right there, so now he's out of position. I can come back over here next turn. In the VIP area of the Clover Club beneath the restaurant, Peter Clover winks and pins a four-leaf clover to your coat. You become a Clover Club member. Do me a favor and return sometime. You offer to pull some strings on his behalf. <laughs> Really? Do I? As I roll influence, if I pass, I get $3. My influence is only two dice, so not too optimistic, but oh, crud. So my influence is only two, which is problematic, because if I fail this, I'll lose my blessing. 
But I didn't. Okay, cool. So I'm getting $3 and a Clover Club membership. Clover Club membership. After you perform a gather resources, that's where I get $1 action in the downtown neighborhood. I may spend $2 to gamble. If I do, roll one die and gain that much money. Well, <laughs> that's fun thematically, but I don't really see that happening too much. I have enough money as is. Okay, these cultists sure are hiding well. Gotta go to the bag again. Get a new headline. Mysticism malfeasance. Occultism craze sweeps Arkham. Police warn most mediums frauds. Beecher boasts magic very real. Okay, I test uh, willpower minus one with my bonus. That'll be a three. If I fail, place a doom in my space. Not too bad there. And, ah, nice. With uh, my blessing, I didn't need it, but I do not suffer the consequence. My second token is nothing. That's all the blanks, though, so I'm definitely going to have some rougher turns coming up. All right, well, we can play with the Nightmarish Fiend. I'm going to just go right back to the police station. Okay, and for my second action, I think I'm going to trade out my observation focus for a strength focus, since I'm not doing anything with uh, clues right now, but I'm fighting a whole lot. All right, uh, the Nightmarish Fiend just <laughs> keeps following me around like a little dog chasing its tail. And uh, I get to see what my encounter is. You share your findings with Sheriff Engel. Test influence. If you pass, he offers you some off-the-books help. You gain one common item. Whether you pass or not, one particular cop was listening intently. Spawn the set-aside Billy Cooper monster at the police station and return this card to the archive. Nice. So uh, I'll be able to fight him right away because he's on my space. But first, let's see if I get this common item and hopefully don't lose my blessing. To influence. But I still got it. I get a free... Common item. Well, I haven't taken too much damage, but I still think the bulletproof vest, that's the most expensive one. That's going to give me four more life. And uh, once per round, if two or more damage would be dealt to this, I prevent one damage. So, gosh, I'm just a tank with this thing. New card revealed is Secret Page, plus two to ward actions. I already have that for my ally, but hey, if I get a chance to get it, that wouldn't hurt to have another one. Here's good old Billy Cooper on my space. I'll put one doom at the police station every turn, so clearly I'm going to stop that. He's got three life, minus one modifier, uh, two damage. If you defeat another monster while engaged with Billy, he's also defeated. Well, that'd be awesome if the Nightmarish Fiend was already on my space, but he's not. So I think I'm going to have to defeat Billy and then run over to uh, downtown to try to find another cultist. Okay, drawing my two tokens. Uh, I got a gate burst in Uptown. Oh, man, that's not great. To show you briefly, Uptown's in a bit of a bad way. We got uh, three on Hagman's Hill. Two down here on the Magic Shop and one on St. Mary's Hospital. So, not loving that, and I'm really far away, so it'd be tough to get all the way down there. Second token is a Doom. Let's go into Rivertown. Hopefully, not the General Store. Ah, it's the General Store and the Graveyard. Just to remind you how the outbreak works if space has four more Doom, I take away three Doom and then put one Doom on each other space in the neighborhood and one on the scenario sheet. The General Store is going up to four, Graveyards at two. I'm then taking three of these. One goes to the Black Cave, one goes to the Graveyard. It's primed to pop as well. And uh, the last one goes to the Scenario Sheet. That's three Doom out of eight that'll cause uh, the bad stuff to advance. Now, the Graveyard's not too far away, but, man, I am doing other stuff, so I don't know if I'll get to it. All right, I got to defeat two more cultists. Uh, one is on me, and one is waiting in downtown. So the Nightmarish Fiend is still chasing me. If I can defeat Billy in one action, I can then just run over to downtown, try to have another uh, interaction, and hopefully uh, beat out the doom that's starting to pile up around the board while I'm up here in the north. So Billy's got a minus one, but don't forget I've added a strength focus token, so now I'm three plus five from the shotgun, I'm rolling eight, minus one is seven. So I'm rolling seven dice, have to do three damage. I'm still blessed. One, two, three, four, five damage, even without Lita's help, he is done. So that is my fourth token. I need one more. And again, uh, he's got three doom. Uh, that's only my first action. Now let's see what else I'm going to do. Okay, so I know when I move to downtown, uh, Arkham Asylum can heal my sanity. La Bella Luna can get me money. Independent Square can get me items. It's probably the best one. But, you know, I'm realizing all these cultists are, again, from the core game of Arkham Horror LCG. And I'm pretty sure Ruth Turner worked at the hospital and Wolfman Drew was at the asylum like he was an asylum patient which makes me think that if i'm smart i'll end my turn on the asylum he'll spawn there and i won't have to waste an action moving to him so even though the asylum's actual power isn't going to help me too much i'm going to go there uh with the intention of fighting the wolfman right away so one two three it costs one of my money so i'm down to four 
The Nightmarish Fiend follows me. I'm actually going to have him, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so I can choose. I'm going to have him go this way, so that this passage is opened up if I want to get down to uh, where all the doom is. You check yourself into the asylum. I do? <laughs> you recover two sanity. Well, that's nice. I'm fully healed now. You befriend one of the other patients who mumbles about cursed oaths and powers beyond the mortal. You decide to sneak him out. Uh, so I roll my observation. If I pass, Daniel Chesterfield joins you. If you fail, you are caught and forced to leave. Oh, Daniel Chesterfield. He was in uh, the Dunwich, or no, the Path to Carcosa uh, cycle of Arkham Horror LCG. So lots of little connections here. Sadly, I've only got two observations since I got rid of my focus token. Oh, okay. I'm going to use my uh, rabbit's foot. Don't want to lose my blessing. Come on. Oh, I'm going to discard my focus token to reroll one. Come on, baby. There we go. Thank you. Blessing. All right, so I'm getting Daniel Chesterfield and not losing my blessing. Okay, Asylum Patient. Once per round, you may reroll any number of dice. That's great. Then if you don't have a Dark Pact, you gain one. <laughs> well, with previous experience, Dark Pacts means, like, you can just straight up die immediately. So I don't know if I'll be using that power. But hey, at least he's got three life. Uh, not much sanity. That makes sense for an Asylum Patient. But yeah, he might be able to take some hits for me at least. All right, two tokens. Oh, man, another monster. I guess I got to deal with these guys. This is an eyeless watcher. He spawns at the unstable space, which currently is either the general store or the graveyard, so I can pick. Uh, he does move toward me, two spaces a turn. Not too tough. Um, I mean, he actually doesn't stop me from having encounters, so that's kind of nice. So he's, and he's pretty low on damage, too. He's not really that worrisome. The second one is another headline. Unscheduled parade shuts down Main Street. Revelers wearing fanciful costumes. Silver Twilight Lodge blamed. Sinister magic music unrelated, sources say. So for one horror for each monster in my neighborhood. Well, the Nightmarish Fiend is on the street next to me, but not in my neighborhood, so I think I suffer none. That's that's great. So to show you, I can either put the Eyeless Watcher on the Black Cave or the Graveyard. I'm going to have him be further away from me. So I'm in a somewhat awkward position. Um, if I stay on Arkham Asylum, the Nightmarish Fiend will come and attack me, and I won't actually be able to uh, get an encounter and find my last cultist. But if I charge in and fight him, I'll just be on the street and clearly won't have a good encounter either. But, I mean, I guess I kind of got to charge him or nothing's going to happen for, for me this turn. Keeping with the minus one modifier, I have seven dice with my shotgun and focus token. Oh, that's way... Oh, yeah, I got with my blessing. That's one, two, three, four, five, six damage out of four. He is done. I get... Oh, no, another remnant. I have like 80 of those things. But uh, he is defeated. That's good. Okay, the Eyeless Watcher is going to move toward me, but not reach me, which does free me up to go back to the Asylum without him reaching me next turn. That's good. Let's see what my encounter is in the streets. Okay, street spaces come in one of three varieties. In this case, I'm in a residential space. An old woman startles you from your reverie and begs your help to cross the street. She chatters about her grandchildren all the way to the other side. Her ignorance of the darkness you fight is somehow reassuring. You or an ally of your choice regain, recovers one sanity. Well, Lita has a sanity, so I'll get rid of that. And you focus one skill of your choice. Well, that's great. I'm going to focus my willpower again. Okay, draw my token. Let's try to finish this thing up. Reckoning. That's one doom straight on the sheet. So that is four out of eight doom on the sheet now. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to run away from the Eyeless Watcher, go to the Asylum. Hopefully, uh, I'll get the guy there this turn. And for my second action... There's not really much for me to do. I guess I'm just going to get a dollar. I'm not sure if that's even useful, but I don't have anything to focus otherwise. And the Eyeless Watcher chases me. I'll have him go to Independence Square to be out of my way. Charles Badeau has an unexpected opening in his schedule. He may spend one dollar to cover three sanity. Well, I don't need to. The opening is because one of his patients has escaped or been set free. He spawned the set-aside Wolfman Drew monster engaged with you and returned this card to the archive. Well, that's interesting. So he would have been engaged with me no matter what. Uh, well... Either way, I'm going to be able to fight him. So this is theoretically my last cultist, then we'll see what the scenario calls for next. Uh, he actually tries to hunt me down, very different than the other guys. Uh, he's three, minus one, also heals himself, does two damage. Shouldn't be too tough to destroy him next turn. Okay, and we got two tokens left. We have another Doom at St. Mary's Hospital. That's kind of lucky for us because uh, Hangman's Hill was actually about to pop. So now St. Mary's is at two Doom. Hangman's Hill and the Magic Shop are at uh, three or two each. Other one is New Clue. Going to downtown, which is where I am. So I'm really happy now that I 
got the uh, character because I didn't want to have to keep on searching for him. All right, we know what we're doing with our first action, fighting Wolfman Drew and seeing how this story uh, continues. Got seven dice with his minus one. Boom! Oh, man, two shotgun blasts, two barrels right in the face. So this does get my fifth token on the scenario sheet. Let's see what happens with our False Faces card. After the fifth marker is placed on the scenario sheet, if card 11 is still in the codex, flip that card. Card 11 is still in the codex. That's the one we uh, started with. It's waiting for 8 Doom. So uh, let's see what happens. Okay, if card 10 is still in the codex, flip that card before continuing. That was a card that I had before I got the, uh, the Cultist card, so now. Shadows gather around Hangman's Hill. That's all the way on the other side of the board. A deep and unaccountable darkness that sends people and animals fleeing for their homes. The shadows form a shape that is too dark to resolve or too fluid or too awful to contemplate. A Mordhoth is come. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, this is different than what happened in the last scenario. So I'm going to take card 18 and spawn him. So he's actually a monster at Hangman's Hill. And then add card 18 to the codex. Oh man, I thought defeating all these guys might just let me win, but apparently I'm not done yet. Okay, so let's look at this guy. Uh, so, Mordoth, he moves one space a turn. He actually comes toward me. He's massive, which uh, I think is only applies to, like, evasion, so I'm not going to worry about that. And, oh my gosh. Eight and Elite Four. Four extra per investigator. So he has 12 life, minus two modifier, minus one. Gosh, he's massive. Uh, so he attacks everyone and can't be exhausted. As you attack a Mordoth, you may spend any number of clues from the scenario sheet to deal them much additional damage. Oh, cool. So if I had gotten extra clues, they would actually give me a bonus. That's nice to know, but I don't have any right now. The other card we got says the Feast of Ghouls. The reason for the mysterious disappearances stands revealed, as the shapeless enormity of a Mordoth stalks Arkham. Everywhere it goes, it consumes. Corpses, worshippers, livestock, townsfolk. The devourer below makes no distinction. It eats everything and everyone in its path. <laughs> That's horrifying. Yet some intelligence guides its movements as it draws inexorably closer to you. You can feel its hunger clawing at your mind, twinned to a hatred more intense than merely mortal. A Mordoth hungers, but it is your flesh in particular it craves. The Mordoth epic monster's health is reduced by two for each marker on the scenario sheet. Oh, so I do get a bonus. Uh, so I've got five markers on the scenario sheet. So that's minus ten health. So this monstrous guy has two health. <laughs> okay, so I guess all his like, little cultists worshipping him would have made him really tough, but now he's kind of a pushover. Uh, if I defeat him, I flip card 12. That was my earlier card about the uh, false faces. Oh, and if there's 15 or more doom on the scenario card, flip this card. All right, so I'm pretty far away, but I still have one action this turn uh, because I just defeated the guy and made all that stuff happen. So Mordoth is going to move one every turn. And I can move one, two, three, four. Okay, cool. So I can get right next to him. Um, let's see, where do I want to end? Black Cave could give me spells. Let's go there. So that's going to cost me one dollar. And uh, my face, uh, Eyeless Watcher, won't be able to catch up to me. He only moves two. And uh, yeah, I'll just wait for a Mordhoth to move one and then go in and crush him in his two measly life in just a moment because I'm awesome. The Eyeless Watcher comes flying after me. A Mordhoth just slithers and eats some people on the street. Terrible. Let's go to uh, my encounter at the Black Cave. According to local legend, a witch once lived in these caves. Either test Lord or remember the exact location or spend one clue. Don't have any to check your notes. If you pass or spend the clue, you discover old broken trinkets. Gain one curio item. If you fail, you hear the whispers of an old woman in the cave. Okay, let's see if I can get a little item. My lore is four. I'm still blessed. Tell about rabbit's foot. Cut it easily. So let's see if anything will help me. I could get the Mystic Tome that would help me uh, cast spells better, but I think I'm probably just going to shotgun the guy. So let's go ahead and go digging and see what first curio item I come up with. Okay, I got a pocket watch. <laughs> God! Well, you're seeing a playthrough of like easy mode apparently, because I just got this as my lucky draw. I get an extra action every turn. Well, thank you very much. So the bag ran out last turn. I have to draw some new tokens. Got a new monster. It is a Flesh Eater. He spawns in the Unstable Space, which is currently St. Mary's Hospital. And that's enough out of the way. Um, although, if I don't kill a Mordhoth, he will come charging at me. But hopefully that won't be an issue. And the other one is a new clue. Don't think that's going to matter, but it's going to Southside. All right, well, my work has made this guy basically a wuss, so let's uh, charge him and put him out of his misery. So he's got... 
8 plus 4 per player, 12, minus 10 for my 5 tokens, 2 life, minus 2 modifier. Um, and I could spend clues to do more damage. I don't have any. Let's just see how this works out. Okay, so I have 3 strength for my focus token, plus 5 for my shotgun, minus 2 for a Mordhoth. I'm still blessed. Still have my uh, rabbit's foot. Can reroll twice with my focus tokens. Let's do this. That's already enough, man. How easy is it when you get all those cultists? Okay, so a Mordoth is defeated. It says I get to flip card 12. With a final ear-drilling shriek, that's right, not ear-splitting, ear-drilling, a Mordoth bursts into a cloud of smoke. As the weak sunlight of an Arkham morning stabs through the clouds, even the smoke dissipates. The ghouls, what few of them still remain above ground, howl in fear and run loping on all fours for the sewers, caverns, and drain pipes of the city. Knowing that such creatures dwell beneath Arkham, you may never sleep soundly again, but at least you've defeated their god. At least you've shown them that the human beings of the city above are not prey to be feasted upon, but predators to be feared in their own right. Investigators win the game. And heck yes, when you've got shotgun and magical pocket watch and allies and rabbit's foot and bulletproof vest and you're blessed and another ally and god, look at this, look at this. Like a thousand <laughs> remnants just sitting here doing nothing for me um there you go arkham horror uh, third edition crushing it like a boss good gaming everyone